Andy Mogul. Welcome back to another edition of Friday 101 Mailbag, which I totally didn't shoot right after last week's episode on account of the holidays this week. I just wear this shirt a lot. Uh, crap. Hang, hang on. Let's get to our first email for the week from Prajwal Rai. Hi, I have been watching your videos for a long time now and seem to have used it a lot. I've started a talk show kind of thing in Facebook, and since I am new and only one video old, I am not getting proper reviews. Please let me know of the changes and improvements we can make. I checked out the show and there's one major thing I have to say. You'll definitely want to invest in a decent shotgun microphone or really any external mic at all because the in-camera audio sounds pretty bad. Facebook. What's a big deal about it? It would be a big help because the video is actually pretty funny at times and comes off as an Indian version of the gentleman's rant. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Stop f***ing messing with my wall. Audio is a huge factor and that's where this one suffers most. Also, just a suggestion, try cutting something like this into multiple videos. You could get a good series of videos complaining about Facebook out of this. Sitting through eight straight minutes of it can get a bit taxing. Peace. Please stop tagging me in your good morning, good night, and all bullshit pictures. If you take any of that advice into account, send the result to mogulermade at gmail.com and maybe we can get it on the show. Our next message from Luke Thompson. DSLR cinema rig for not much. Good email, Luke. I actually had to do a little searching myself to find a good full DSLR rig. If you just want a shoulder support, you can find the Cowboy Studio shoulder rig for about $30 or less, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And if you look up DIY DSLR shoulder rig, you'll find a lot of entries all over YouTube. But for something that does a lot more than just stabilizing, I found this rig on a huge sale, down to $235 from $600 on Amazon, called the Fancier Studio DSLR rig. It includes handles, the shoulder support, a mat box, and most impressively, a follow focus. If you're the handy type, this was my favorite DIY one that included a follow focus from Mitch Netzer. As I always point out, I'm not handy at all, but if you are, it's worth a look. I'll include the link at the end playlist. From Sajin Zero, I have a few issues that have been plaguing me for years and I challenge you to find some answers because I've been searching my ass off. First, what do you do if your friends suck, can't get actors or crew, actors you can get are too terrible to use or whatever else? I've tried forums, Craigslist, Facebook, film slash video events, and even dating sites that have a just for friends option. I managed to squeeze one person out of that and it didn't work out. I live in New Jersey, by the way. Hey, I live in New Jersey. I'll act in something sometime. But I hear this a lot. And as it turns out, most people aren't the most comfortable in front of the camera. I was shooting a movie last year with a kid who was still in high school. We gave him one direction on a shot. Look to your left and say your line. Somehow he couldn't do this. He kept saying the line and maybe slightly looking to the left with his eyes, which always wound up looking right right back into the lens. It actually got so bad that my old movie quest co-host Chad had to put his hands on the back of his head under his hair, which was long, and manually turn the kid's head before he said his line. It was one of the strangest experiences I've ever had directing. So how do you find good actors when kids like this are all you have to work with? The best thing you can do when still in school is join the drama club. If you can't act, join the crew. Befriend some kids who actually want to act. I was in my high school's plays, and that was because I used to actually want to direct and act, but either way, being friends with actors was a huge help. Also, being around the acting process helps you understand acting better in general, and the more you understand what an actor goes through, the easier it becomes to work with them. Also, if you can't get a performance out of someone by telling them how to act, try getting their mindset to go somewhere else. If you need them to get serious, talk to them beforehand. When I was taught how to talk to actors at New York Film Academy, the teacher had me go in front of the class and read a dramatic scene. It was so-so, but then he asked me what was something that had happened to me in my life that made me upset. And it took some prodding, but he got me settled on focusing on a huge friendship ending fight that I'd had with an old friend maybe a year before. He had me concentrate on it, get angry thinking about it, and when I was in the mindset he wanted, he had me immediately read the scene again. And you'd have thought I was some kind of Academy Award winner when we played the footage back. It was really weird. That won't work in every situation. Some people get too uncomfortable getting into their own emotions in front of people, but it's something to consider when you can't get a friend or even an actor you're working with to get where you need them to get. Past that, all the places that you mentioned in your email are still good options sometimes. I'd add modelmayhem.com to that list. There's also Backstage Magazine. I was in a production where we put an ad in Backstage and overnight got at least 20 
to 30 responses via email, so it could definitely work. Sage and Zero's second question. What do you do if your apartment slash house is not an option to film? I desperately need workspace and I can't think of any way to get it for free or on the cheap. If you can't just shoot in an apartment or house, try finding any place that you can and tailoring the videos you make to that location. We couldn't shoot indoors a lot back in 2002 to 2004 when I was first putting videos online. So what we used to do was me and my friends would meet up at our local shopping center, Brick Plaza, and we just shot whatever we could think of to do in this area, which you wouldn't think would be much, but we did a ridiculous number of videos there. We even became associated with the place, and to this day people still bring it up to us and how we should still shoot something there. Even Justin Johnson brought it up last time I saw him, as he was a regular viewer back then. In fact, if you want to see a lot of my old work from that day, uh, I almost hate to do it, but here it is. Right there. That's where it's all at. Uh, I pretty much have never publicized it in any big way because a lot of it is so bad. But what the hell. Have fun with it. The stories behind each video are in the descriptions and some make for some pretty interesting reading. It was actually once suggested to me by the very few people who have actually seen that channel that one day I should hold a contest to see who can do my favorite video that is a remake of something on that channel. Maybe one day. Maybe. So yeah, uh, if you're still in school, as much as it sucks, if you can't get many locations to shoot in at all, do your best to tailor things towards where you can shoot. Or maybe even you can talk to the school and they'll let you shoot there after hours. That's my advice anyway. If anybody has better options, leave them in the comments below. That's gonna do it for this week. Keep sending in your questions to friday101mail at gmail.com and we'll do another mailbag segment in a month or so. Check back next week for more great indie mogul content, including Indie News with Griffin on Monday, Awesome Directors Project on Wednesday, Mogul are Made Tuesday and Thursday, and another Friday 101 to round it out. We'll see you then.